Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Methodical Methodist Podcast. I'm your host, the Reverend Andrew Lay, and if you like the show, I hope that you might take a minute to subscribe, rate, and write a review for the podcast. It helps boost the show and make it to where more people can find it. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash methodicalpod, and you can find me on Instagram as well. My handle is at methodicalpod. Today on the podcast, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to talk about my new Advent book, Hope for the Holidays, Exploring the Message of Hope in the Christmas Story. The season of Advent and Christmas is really my favorite time of the year. There's something about the season that I really love. I love the Christmas trees and ornaments. I love the Christmas lights and decorations. I love Christmas carols and the hymns that we sing. But I think the thing I love most about the season is what we are celebrating and the way that the season makes me feel. I love this feeling of the Christmas spirit centered around the celebration of the birth of Christ. Now, my wife, Allie, really gets into the Christmas spirit early on. My family growing up always waited to put our Christmas tree up until after Thanksgiving, but somehow Allie convinced me to put up our tree early last year, and this year, by the way. And uh, last year, we were in the midst of the COVID pandemic before the vaccine had come out, and we both just kind of needed some Christmas cheer. And I have to say, I enjoyed our Christmas tree more last year than I had since I was a young child. I know it seems silly, but it felt like a sense of hope in a dark time. Little did Allie and I know that we would be spending Christmas 2020 in quarantine. And I have to say, there's nothing worse than a preacher in quarantine during Christmas. I was going crazy. Uh, Usually every Christmas, I'm running around nonstop in such a busy time in the life of the church, and I'm used to going and going and going. But I found myself having to stop all of a sudden. I couldn't go into the church, couldn't preach my Christmas Eve sermon, couldn't do all the things that I was used to doing during this season. And so I had to do something kind of with all this pinned up energy. So I started writing. started writing the sermons that I wouldn't be able to preach. And it's kind of morphed into this bigger project. And it eventually turned into this book, this Advent devotional. And I had absolutely no intentions of actually publishing it. But my wife, Allie, really encouraged me to send it in to a a few publishers anyway. And so that's what I did. Sent it in to a few uh, small publishing companies. And then I completely forgot about it. Seriously, I was was completely shocked when Kara's publishing company came back and told me that they wanted to publish my little book. And my mind at first went, oh, great. Uh, My book's going to get published. And then I immediately went to, oh, no, (laughs) my book is going to get published. This means that people might actually read it now. But one of the things that I really wanted to focus on in this book was the theme of hope. I can sometimes get frustrated with finding material for Advent sermon series. A lot of books and series look at Christmas according to Scrooge or How the Grinch Stole Christmas or It's a Wonderful Life. And we saw these Lifetime movies about how Christmas is about family and romantic love. But, you know, I I wanted in my book to focus on the traditional scriptures and themes from the Bible and how it's connected to this idea of hope. I know it's an old story, it's a familiar story, but I think it's a story that that still speaks to us today. And hope is a profound and necessary thing for us to experience. I think it's often the most prevalent during the season of Christmas. This message of hope is something that we desperately need. There are times when we feel like we are surrounded by experiences of pain, loss, and suffering. In the midst of these times, it can be hard to see any good. Over the past few years, we found ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic. On the news, we witnessed numerous accounts of violence and racism. We hear about school shootings and acts of terrorism. And we also experience times in our own lives that are difficult and challenging. During these trying moments in life, it can be hard to find the hope that is present in our lives. The Christmas season is a time that is full and ripe with hope. In the Christmas season, we find hope knowing that Christ has come to dwell among us as Emmanuel, which means God with us. That is what we celebrate at Christmas, the incarnation, when Jesus came in the flesh to dwell among us. And we hold on to the hope that Christ will come again to make all things new. This understanding is what gives us hope, knowing that the brokenness and pain that exists in our world will one day be made right that we don't have to fend for ourselves. We are not hopeless. We are not alone. God is with us. And so in this book, we will explore the ways that we can experience hope for the holidays 
In each chapter, we look at different characters in the Christmas story and how they offer us messages of hope to us in our lives. In chapter 1, we focus on John the Baptist's message concerning the hope of salvation. In chapter 2, we will turn to the story of Joseph and the hope that he finds in the angel's message about the birth of Emmanuel. In chapter 3, we look at the hope for justice that Mary expresses in her song, The Magnificat. In chapter 4, we explore the hope that is proclaimed to the shepherds about the birth of the Christ child. In chapter 5, we address the hope that is fulfilled through the wise men who visited Jesus. And in the epilogue, we revisit the hope that is made flesh in the incarnation of Jesus who dwells among us. My hope is that you will read this book during the season of Advent and that you will encounter this story in a fresh and new way. And as you read this book, may you explore this message of hope in the Christmas story, but may you also explore the message of hope in your own life as well. May you be filled with God's message of hope as you journey to Christmas. You can find my book on Amazon.com, Cokesbury.com, and CarisPublishing.com. You can also purchase an audiobook of Hope for the Holidays on Audible. And now I'm going to share a clip from the book. During the season of Christmas, we are invited to receive a message that is focused on the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christ. It's a special season when we are called to remember the Christ who came to us at Christmas and anticipate Christ's second coming. For many, Christmas is a time when we experience hope in circumstances that might seem hopeless. As we look around at our world, we see examples of racism, violence, and injustice, and we are reminded of our need for a Savior to come into the world and right all of our wrongs. We can turn on CNN or listen to NPR and find examples of injustice and oppression in the United States of America and around the world. We witness tragic and horrific events almost daily. I can think of several examples. On February 14, 2018, a gunman entered Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. The shooter, a 19-year-old man, opened fire with a semi-automatic rifle, killing 17 people. This tragic event marked the deadliest high school shooting in United States history. On May 25, 2020, the world was shocked by the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. George Floyd was accused of buying cigarettes with a counterfeit $20 bill. In response to the call, three police officers pinned Floyd down for 8 minutes and 46 seconds. One of these officers had his knee lodged against Floyd's throat, which cut off his air supply, causing his death. On January 6, 2021, As the House and Senate were voting to certify the results of our 2020 presidential election, we witnessed throngs of people storm past the police and into the United States Capitol building. They tussled with officers in full riot gear, broke into the chambers, and entered governmental offices. They carried Confederate flags and were adorned with Nazi symbols. Five people died because of this domestic terrorist attack. We are in need of a Savior. We need Christ to bring hope to the world. In our pain and suffering, we find hope in the coming of Christ. In the message of Jesus' birth, we receive, as the Christmas hymn, O Holy Night, says, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks, a new and glorious morn. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Methodical Methodist Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, I hope you might consider heading on over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review of the show. It is very much appreciated. And until next time, stay methodical.